Good morning, I'm Cus Valeris. I'm a mechanical engineer and uh, I'm coming from Athens uh, with the Group Energy Conservation at NOA. Uh, you see my colleagues, uh, Elena Daskalaki, <laughs> I will repeat them with a better accent, my Greek accent. Uh, Ms. Rucha and Mr. Kotogenidis who are with uh, my team. Uh, and then we had um, a young colleague, uh, Ms. Micha, uh, that she worked part uh, for her uh, master thesis that's included in this uh, work, in this paper. And then uh, Professor Ayiru from the University of Patras that have been uh, collaborating and co-authored uh, this work that you will find in the proceedings in the next few minutes. I will try to present an overview and keep it interesting uh, without going into the details, although that's where uh, we actually need to uh, get our resources and the information. Hopefully this uh, work will be a contribution towards this uh, direction. With uh, buildings, as uh, we heard, uh, we have an issue, we have a problem we're trying to tackle, we're trying to address with regard to the energy use, they are a sink of the energy and that of course has an environmental impact and all the other implications. And uh, we're averaging about 40% uh, of the final energy use in Europe. It's actually going for our buildings. In Serbia, that's a little bit higher, it's about 46%. Uh, across the Atlantic, in the U.S., about 34%. In China, it's about 22%. So you have different mixtures, but you can see, indeed, that's a big part of the energy use we're using. And, of course, as a result, we're trying to address and find the solutions in this direction. Now, in this work, we're trying to really focus on non-residential commercial buildings. Why is there interest? Traditionally, there has been quite a bit of attention given to the residential sector as a result because also there are different uh, types, of course, of residential buildings, but they're easily grouped. And uh, the resources, the available information that we have has been uh, really more detailed. But with non-residential buildings, and we do have quite a few million buildings and quite a few billion square uh, meters uh, floor area uh, and uh, as a result that's about a quarter of your building stock is the number is that so commercial looking at this we're trying to of course uh, uh, resolve uh, where's the main where should our main focus be in different countries it may be more important you see of course the big European countries have uh, the largest contribution, bigger population, more buildings. Of course, you'd expect that. That's being reflected by the size of the bubble there. And uh, as a percentage on the x-axis, you see that the non-residential buildings, in some cases, you see on the far right-hand side, on the lower end, uh, that uh, right there, Malta, for example, the little island of Malta, it's uh, well over 20% of the final energy going to the non-residential buildings. Uh, I couldn't avoid the temptation to also put there Serbia, just so that you associate in your local context uh, how big the problem is here. Of course, as I said, the size of the bubble, how much of the total energy, bigger countries, have, of course, bigger role, bigger contribution. So, given the situation over the years, over a couple of decades in uh, the European Union, you're aware there has been major legislative efforts over a couple of decades. And uh, different targets, different uh, uh, priorities with regard to the building, with regard to equipment and so forth. But overall, if you look at even the energy policy of the European Union in the past and in the future, 2030 and 2050, they have been placing the buildings at the center stage. And someone might say, well, what are the results after all these years of legislative efforts from the European Union, national efforts and so <laughs> forth? Over the years, 1995 to 2015, over these decades, there has been a drop in the residential sector of about 
3.6%. But the non-residential has been growing, the fastest growing sector of energy use has been growing with about averaging about 29%. So indeed, that sector needs to really be looked at more attention uh, and try to help in this direction. What are we going to use? What we usually use are benchmarks, indicators of how much energy we use. And we usually normalize this per unit floor area. These are the energy using intensities that uh, we are trying to have this benchmark so that we can really have a feeling of how much energy is used for the different types of buildings, for the different end uses. Uh, and uh, there is where the complexity starts. As the big picture, you see in the big pie charts, and I try to kind of like uh, look at two main uh, uh, areas, the European Union on the left and the US on the right, to see that there is a similarity. There are differences, of course. Looking at all non-residential buildings, the end uses of where the energy is coined, and of course, when we're trying to make the analysis and find what kind of available information we have in the sectors, we look at the buildings in terms of their size, in terms of their functions, their operations, in terms of their age, in terms of where they're located, and uh, the different activities, uh, the different building types, whether that would be an office or whether that would be a hospital. It's more <laughs> than evident that depending on their use, function, type, uh, they will have uh, different energy uh, use needs. And we look at the available resources as I said, for uh, the US, for Europe, and then, of course, getting in more detail for our uh, home uh, country in, in Greece. So this work, uh, first of all, identifies uh, the interest uh, and, with regard to this effort, the difficulties. Collecting information, that would explain why there is such a problem there. It takes time. It is a time-consuming process, and at the end, there are also issues with inconsistencies in the data quality of the information that you have <coughs> available. Now, there are sometimes more complete databases. Sometimes uh, they are uh, available with different formats. That's creating an issue. And when they're coming from different sources, it might be an issue of uh, inconsistencies and sometimes getting conflicting information. At least we try to really look at these different uh, resources that we have available in this uh, work and uh, summarize them and present them. So I think uh, if you're interested uh, and uh, active uh, in this uh, kind of uh, uh, policies, in this uh, kind of uh, practical uh, practice design and so forth to have uh, a resource of uh, uh, getting to and referring to in order to have some information. We're using uh, a couple of uh, resources in the U.S. and I'm going to summarize this uh, uh, in the next uh, slide uh, from the commercial building uh, database and then also uh, from ASHRAE uh, and then from the European part the three resources and uh, from Greece, a couple of uh, resources that we have available and see how we can, uh, uh, what kind of information we can uh, retrieve from these uh, uh, databases. Starting with uh, the US, uh, they have uh, this Commercial Building Energy Consumption Survey, in short, CBACs, that includes actual energy use for various types of commercial buildings around the U.S. that they provide a very detailed database with energy use intensities. They collect this data from about six, six, seven hundred buildings, real buildings, real operating <laughs> data across the U.S. They have a very detailed breakdown of what you would expect and anticipate in terms of the different basic uh, 
parameters that uh, would impact the energy use. Uh, you would say, how often do they update this information? It's not being done on an annual basis, it's periodic. The latest one uh, that uh, the, uh, this resource includes information from 2012. So the database includes a wealth of data, a wealth of uh, information. And actually, ASRAE has exploited in uh, a great um, uh, amount of uh, work for using this data, actual energy use data, to uh, base and derive the building energy portion, the labeling scheme that ASRAE has developed so that you can run uh, your building in case that you have actual operational data for an existing building that you monitor its energy consumption in operation. ASRAE has this relatively new labeling scheme that you can use to rank in operation. One of uh, the big uh, advantages of BEQ is that uh, this label that ASRAE has uh, developed actually can put your also design scale and evaluation uh, together in operation and as design. Uh, actually gives you the opportunity to see how a building was conceived and then how it's operated and run and see uh, the differences. And also the EUIs, these energy use interstices, as targets and benchmarks, have been incorporated and uh, uh, presented and summarized in standard 100 that ASRAE has on the energy of this efficiency of existing uh, buildings. In our part of the world, in our neighborhood, in Europe, we have three main resources that uh, you see that are being summarized in this table. And although now you cannot see it in great detail, you see the tick marks. You see that uh, from Eurostat, which is the official database of statistical information in Europe, we do have some very high quality statistics with energy use and emissions for all non-residential buildings. Not really looking, and that's where the problem starts, once you start looking into the different types and different uh, construction periods and different climate zones, different end uses and so forth, uh, that the gaps start appearing. And as you see in the list, the first one that comes from the Eurostat, we have a limited amount of information, a little bit more in recognizing this need uh, a little bit more information is being progressively uh, provided from the EU Building Stock Observatories, from the Director General of Our Energy from the European Commission, that recognizing this great need started this database where everything will be collected, anything and available information from statistical uh, resources in uh, the different European Union member countries, raw data from different resources, uh, European projects and so forth, and detailed though information, even in this case, comes only for 10 countries. And then one uh, European effort that has been going on for quite a few years now, the Odyssey database, that uh, provides relevant uh, data and relevant information, as you see, covering quite a bit and quite a bit of different uh, topics areas. So that gives the big picture of uh, what resources we have and uh, how we can use them. And then you start getting into the details of saying, okay, let's retrieve it. And that's what we try to do in this uh, paper, in this work, to actually present and summarize the different energy use intensities that you have for some non-residential building types and start making this analysis uh, on for the different uh, countries, different European countries, and for the different types of buildings. And again, without looking at the very, very details that you can refer to in the paper, you see there are some gray areas, gaps, already inconsistencies that already, excuse me, needs in terms of uh, 
countries that have no specific information once you start looking at the different types of non-residents, an office and a hospital. Gray area gap. Then for the specifics, you see that we try to compare the different, and we listed here the values <coughs> from the different resources. How does one say uh, uh, the energy use intensity for uh, non-residential buildings compared to the other one. And again, you see the inconsistencies of how much energy per unit floor area, this EUI, would compare if you look from one resource to another. Practically speaking, of course, that creates confusion. That's not good. But at least you have a starting point to start thinking of how much energy is being used and where. Then uh, we dig into deeper. Uh, to compare this, and uh, this graph shows uh, the blue from one uh, resource, uh, the orange from another resource. You see very easily, and we try to portray this information in the paper so that you can uh, quickly identify, and of course in the tabulated values where you can see all the resources. The big thing, missing detailed breakdown for the different national building types, energy use, energy carriers. The deeper you go into the level of detail that you wish, the bigger the gaps and the problems exist. In uh, Greece, uh, we tried to look at this issue probably with the uh, resources, the information we have been collecting through the energy performance certification process. Every European country has this process ongoing. So we are exploring our building stock issuing the performance certificates. The certificates that are available include information about the existing buildings. So, and the new buildings, of course, that are under construction, they have to issue uh, a certificate. Their resource gives us the opportunity now to look at calculated most of the times, and sometimes the certificates also include the actual energy consumption of the building that's being audited to issue the certificate that all of a sudden becomes a valuable resource that we're trying to explore to give us a better understanding of what's happening with the non-residential buildings in uh, Greece. Similar, of course, uh, anal uh, analysis can be performed in other countries, but uh, our exercise here was to focus on uh, the existing condition in uh, Greece. And trying to collect now in an easy to visualize uh, graph is uh, this uh, uh, last graph that I'm presenting to you, trying to really put together the information that we have in Europe. Uh, the big bubble with the European Union flag represents the average in uh, uh, Europe with all the countries and then you see the breakdown with the different countries and I added, included there, the US uh, average Overall, when you look at the big picture, all the non-residential buildings, you see the average values are pretty comparable. And then you go to different locations, countries, yeah. you see there are variations. And interesting enough, this exercise, though, wanted to see with the focus that we have for Greece, if we look at the information we get from the Energy Performance Certificate, you see we are pretty close to what we know as an average UI for the actual energy use uh, in Greece from the statistical information. So that exercise gave us at least some confidence that the approach, when we start to look at this valuable resource of the certificate, gives us the opportunity to come up with indicators that will reflect close to the reality and will have some practical value. And from there, of course, now we are building with more certificates being issued, better understanding for all the different types around the country, and so forth. So in conclusion, this work tried to identify and analyze the available resources. We focused both in Europe and provided some uh, dependable information from the US. They do have actually one of the best resources across the Atlantic in terms of the detailed information for energy use in the non-residential building. We do have a handicap still in Europe. We're trying to improve uh, this uh, knowledge progressively 
this information is uh, in, in rates. They are gaps, they are inconsistencies, but at, long, at least hopefully with uh, this paper, you have a starting point and you can uh, identify the usable and interesting resources uh, for you. But before I go, a point of caution. Numbers uh, expressing energy per unit flow, flow are yeah, very practical. They give us a benchmark, they give us an understanding, and immediately we know what uh, maybe our and, uh, building, specific building, how it's performing, how good, how bad, and so forth, before we dig into the details. But even these indicators need uh, to be used with caution. First of all, look whether it's actual or calculated. Big differences uh, in terms of interpreting uh, this um, uh, energy use. The flow area definition, be careful to go and look at the resource to understand what is the square meter that they use the floor area. Is it the total? Is it the gross? Is it the air condition? What is it? Because of course you understand energy per floor area, it, depending on what uh, numbers you're using to reflect and describe uh, the intent of this indicator, there will be big differences. And of course, what <coughs> end uses are included? Some indicators that are available, and we try to summarize and document in this work what exactly they're being used. Is it including all HVAC, hot water, plug loads? Some, the majority, do not, especially when they're calculated, do not include plug loads. Uh, so look at what they actually mean before you use them and exploit them. Thank you very much for the opportunity of being here, uh, and uh, I hope you, once you get to the proceedings, you will find some good practical information, at least some starting points, if you are interested in looking and supporting your work in the non-residential buildings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.